missed the part. Lemke puts down the bunt. He bare hands it. Pettit does. Throws the third. Gets the out. Means first and second. One out. Bottom of the sixth. One nothing lead. He's nursing. And Chipper Jones at the plate. Pitch. Swung on and grounded right back to Pettit. He goes to second one. On to first. It's a double play. That's a new one now. That's it. The double play. And then we have, of course, uh, a ball at Daryl Strawberry, who has looked pretty, you know, he's not your Stremski, but he looks pretty good in the outfield. Blouser rocks one for him in the eighth. Let's listen. The pitch is swung on and in high and deep to left here. That goes Strawberry on the track at the wall. Makes the catch at the wall. Daryl Strawberry made a terrific catch. That's the fielding play of the game. And then a wetland. Two on, two out. And Louis Polonia kept fouling the ball back. He got one a little bit over the plate. And here's what happened. And it'll be an 0-2. Jones, a tying run. Chipper Jones off third. Plesko, the winning run off first. And the 0-2 swung on and hit in the air to deep right field. O'Neill is there. He makes the catch. And the Yankees win. The Yankees win. <laughs> <laughs> and right now, dog, we go to Atlanta and welcome in Susan. Who heard I John? Yeah, John, uh, that's what you'd expect tonight. <laughs> Absolutely. Susan, another tremendous job by the Yankees all the way around. A gutty performance. They outplayed the Braves every which way you can these last three days. You, you know, I, I'll, I'll tell you something. I'll tell, I just came up in the elevator with John Sherhold, who just said to me, well, I guess no one's going to win a, 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 road, a, a home game in this series. And I looked at him and he said, yep, I guess no one's going to. And he was muttering, I guess no one's going to win a home game. John's going to pick up Barry Bonds in the next two days? That's <laughs> All right, there are a couple of there are a couple of things that obviously won't get get written about. But when Daryl Strawberry went back and made that catch against the wall, in uh, what inning was that? That was in the eighth. In the in the eighth inning, my mind went to a day in Kansas City when Jose Cardinal and Daryl Strawberry started working every day on playing the outfield. And since that's happened, and, and I was just talking to Cardinal about his feelings. I'm telling you, I mean, this is a different fielder. Darrell is not only not hurting this team in the field, he's been terrific in the field. And, you know, when and, and Cardinal was just talking to me downstairs about the fact, you know, you can't play anymore, so all I can do is coach. And when I see the one guy that I've worked with, and when you see it pay off in, the, in Game 5 of the World Series, and then the other thing is that he's positioning O'Neal because of O'Neal's leg. And he has to gauge where Polonia can hit. And he's got all these charts in front of him of where Polonia can hit and how much he can pull down that line and where he hits. So he pulled Paul over because Bernie can cover. He said, I, I know Bernie can cover from here to here. So he really did it kind of calculating on where to place O'Neal. And he was moving him around. I don't know if they showed it, but he was moving him around on every pitch. And, and Louie followed six balls back. So that kept changing every single time. Um, and, of course, wh what, what can you say about Andy Pettit? I, I, he stopped throwing that cutter inside off the plate. He started locating his pitches, and he was he was tremendous, absolutely tremendous. He had a lot of faith in his breaking ball. He kept it down. He did a tremendous job. He didn't give in to any hitters. He, he did just a brilliant job, and his fielding play in the sixth inning oh. was just that bunt, bare hand to third, may have been the biggest play in the game. It, it, it sure was, and two inches another way, I mean, how many times have we seen that ball go into the dugout and two runs score there? You know, the little the real, little grounder there, I mean, the little bunt back there, and I guess that's what they had that meeting for because they were getting booed off here. I mean, every time, you know, Stottlemyre came out and then the whole infield came in, and I guess uh, what, what Stottlemyre has said to him, now, if he got the chance, go ahead. Don't be afraid to go to third. But how many times have you seen a pitcher do that and the ball ends up someplace else, a couple runs score, and then, of course, the double play ball on Chipper to end that inning? Uh, just tremendous. Yep, and, uh, give, and, and, and this guy waited a long time like a lot of these guys did. But Big Daddy has oh, shown up to play yeah. in this world long, series. A long way away from Detroit, I'll tell you that. You know, he's a I, and one game away from that ring, dog. He's got a lot of home runs and a lot of money, and yeah, he's one game away from that ring. And it, and and the, the single and the double and the other single in the sixth inning. And you know, did you see? Did you see him chugging into second base on that double to left? I mean, he's, he's going, cranking. I thought he, he might was, steal third. He was cranking. He had his face all contorted, and he's running as hard as he could. And and uh, Hayes was laughing when he came around. Did you see him? Hayes, Hayes came around. 
around and he looked back at Cecil and hey, he starts you can laughing. Tell. They love Fielder. Yeah, yeah, no, I know they do. Well, he, he, Hayes and, and Cecil and Reigns are absolutely inseparable. And and Hayes and Reigns, Hayes and uh, Fielder are very close. And it was Hayes who started talking to Fielder um, along with Daryl, but mostly Hayes talking to Fielder about how to how to hit these guys because Hayes played you know yep. almost all his career I, in the National League. And I'll tell you, it's funny when you watch as we Doug and I just did watch Fielder in an interview, and he, and he says, I love my little guy, Petit. <laughs> he likes hey, my boy, Petit, pitch well. <laughs> you know, Susan, we were a little surprised. Man, more and more we shocked, shocked that, what Wetland, we that Wetland did not start the ninth inning and that Joe oh, allowed baby. Pettit yeah, to I hit know. the top Every of the Joe should go play Lotto tomorrow morning, okay? You know, it, it's unbelievable. I think Sister Mary Marguerite is really, I think you know, she got a pipeline. That's yeah, well, all Sister there is Mary there. Marguerite with her own radio show, I think she's got more than that, boy. I she's mean, got a stairway to heaven is what she has. Well, I guess what, you know, we're think what you're thinking, when I saw it, because I called Mike at the eighth inning, dog, I don't know if you did that. She called me up, dog, and, and she I said, said Wetland's not warming up. Wetland's I said, don't worry, up. he will be, and you know what, he wasn't. <laughs> Where was shot, Susan? I was very, I know Cox did a good job there because he knew that he wanted Pettit to pitch, Joe did, to the two left while Jones right-handed. And then you saw the grip. grip before. I tell you, I was playing with fire by Tory that night. You know, I, I'll tell you though the other thing that I didn't understand. You know, Chipper. You know, you want to keep him uh, hitting from that side and McGriff. Okay, so I figured maybe he's coming in uh, for Lopez there. Okay. When Plesko came up, I'm thinking, okay, do you want Wetland against Plesko, or do you want Lloyd? Uh, you know, if you, if, you, if you bring in Lloyd, obviously, that they're not going to bat Plesko, they'd bat Pendleton. I totally, it never entered my mind that they would even, that they would just walk Plesko, not even bother with it, and pitch to whomever, you know, die or whomever they're going to put up. Because doesn't matter, whatever he does, whatever, whatever whatever he whatever he does, does just it, gets it, buy lotto tickets with him. It works, I, I, I'm telling you, and, you know, this is, uh, this team is, I mean, they're flying high down there. They, well, they don't, don't even need a plane to get home. You might need one to get home. They don't need a plane. <laughs> Please, because they have the plane. I, it's, uh, you know, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, Smoltz was unbelievable. Through 146 pitches. He was brilliant. Pitches, he was brilliant. 10 strikeouts, and, um, and, I, and I think everyone in Atlanta is stunned and absolutely in shock. They Song. Uh -huh. There you go. Here we go. Sing it, Harvin. Yeah. Let's see if Herman can do it. Go ahead, Herman. I gotta learn your Spanish, though. I don't care what language it is. Japanese, bro. We can. Thank you, guys. I love you guys. I always thank you, Herman. Thank you very much. One game to go. Herman, what's up? Here.